One thing that people are very passionate about, as well as their politics, is their food. And we hear from you, our viewers, every week since we shoot One Detroit in various locations, whether it's a deli, whether it's a coffee shop. And recently, I picked up the Detroit Free Press and their coverage of the best of restaurants in Detroit. And I really wanted to sit down with their restaurant critic and their food writer, Mark Kurlanchik. And he was good enough to join us here at Great Lakes Coffee today and have a cup of coffee with yeah. me. Mark, it's good to see you. Welcome to One Detroit. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So is it very strange to walk into a place like this? Are you always the critic? when you walk into a restaurant. I try not to be. I mean, it is it is pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, coffee shops, things like that. I, sometimes I show up in sweats. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, oftentimes, you know, it's, it's hard to go out and just have a have a meal, you know, a celebratory meal with my wife without it feeling like work anymore. Without kind of taking a look around yeah. and saying, hmm, this is really good. Uh, so you've been with the Free Press how long now? How many years? Uh, just, it, it just hit my four-year anniversary the other day. You know, um, what I really love reading about, about your pieces is it's very personal. Um, and you really put a personal touch in it. And and kind of looking at your history, your family were, were political refugees from the Soviet Union and culture is very important to you and food. How does that figure into how you write about places? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think uh, for me, food has always been a way, a, a lens into culture and particularly because of my immigrant background, food has been just so important. You know, I don't have an accent when I speak English, uh, you know, so you wouldn't know that I'm an immigrant if we ran into each other on the street. So for me to preserve that identity, I really do that two ways, through, through the language and then through the food. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there's, you know, in Detroit with its history of, of waves of immigration, I mean, that's what makes eating around, in and around Metro Detroit great, is all these different people from all over the world have come here. And, and they hold on to their culture by offering it with us. I mean, it's really a beautiful, a beautiful thing. Yeah, we do a lot of coverage of stories and tradition and how that all connects yeah. with our food, because I think that sometimes is where our, most of our memories come exactly. from. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a food, you know, you can taste something and it can spark a memory from, you know, childhood that, that is just so... Uh, it's transporting and it kind of makes you forget where you are and you can kind of travel the world you know in 140 square miles or you know expand it outside of the metro area but yeah it's 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 really it's it's amazing well being a food writer right now and especially the restaurant critic for the Detroit Free Press and taking a look at where the food scene is in Detroit I mean it's gone through a massive change and expansion really in the last five years how would you describe it well, I, you know, the, the restaurant industry is very cyclical, um, and we've had a boom. I mean, that's anyone who's spent any time eating in and around Metro Detroit has, has noticed this. I mean, hundreds of restaurants open, and I think that's, you know, the, the maybe the pace is going to begin to slow just because of economic factors. I mean, mm -hmm. you have the cost of labor has gone up, the cost of real estate has gone up, particularly in areas like downtown and midtown. Um, so that's that's changing things. I wrote an article uh, over the summer with a slightly hyperbolic headline that said the restaurant boom is over and here's why. I and how much feedback did you get things. on that? Are people like, whoa, wait a minute? Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, maybe it was a little bit. It was it was a little bit earlier. It was a, kind of ahead of all these closings that are happening now. You know, the beginning of the year started with four kind of major marquee restaurants yeah. um, and and not old. You know, not not old time restaurants. Restaurants that kind of um, led this boom that opened maybe five or six years ago. I'm talking about you know your Gold Cash Gold or your Green Space Cafe or mm -hmm. Craft Work in the West Village. Um, unfortunately, just you know, after all, with all the competition and all these other factors, um, are being forced to close. Are we going to be seeing more of that? I mean, is this just the eventual evening of where, how much resource is going to be able to go around? Well, I think we've had this this huge boom um, in in real estate prices in the, in the amount of restaurants, but we haven't had a corollary boom in population, right? So it's the same. This, it's a limited pot of people who go out, you know, to spend their money at these types of restaurants, um, and that that number hasn't grown. Uh, Conversely, we haven't had uh, a huge influx of, of employees or training. You know, there are some initiatives that are trying to kind of fill the uh, the pipelines uh, mm -hmm. for talent in the in the service industry. Um, but right now, it is very much an employees uh, game, and they you know they hop, hop from around place from to place, place to place. To place. place. Yeah. And, you know, as someone yeah. who's, who's um, trying to make sure you have stability with the restaurant and make sure you it's make, very difficult get in that crowd coming back in with the same caliber level of service yeah. has got to be tough. And it's expensive. You know, if yeah. you if you spend time training your staff and they just you know leave in a month or two you have to start that over again and that costs money so it's just it's driving all the costs up so what are some of the different trends um, that we're seeing I know you spent a lot of time when you put together the restaurant of the year but not only like some of the the new restaurants the older ones getting awards for you know the long time and you know neighborhood places and what are we seeing now yeah, I mean, I think this year for me, what was most surprising was um, maybe the, the hyped up big name restaurants um, didn't deliver as, as well as some of these grassroots places. You know, um, I'm thinking of like Yum Village and New Center or Saffron Day Trois over on the east side. Um, and I'm not the only one that's written about them, but they've, you know, they both started as food trucks. 
they're a kind of very community oriented, community led. Um, you know, they don't have PR teams or marketing budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's they're family run operations, and those have really kind of. Um, brought something new to the area, brought something exciting and fresh, more so than some of these, um, you know, maybe four, four million dollar kind of big, big build out, splashy build out restaurants. And um, that's, that's exciting to see because the silver lining of real estate in, in downtown and Corktown being expensive is now it's getting out into the neighborhoods. Um, I was at Ivy Kitchen and Cocktails mm -hmm. just, just last night, um, great new spot on the east side. You know, Naya Marshall fully self-funded that, that restaurant. Um, and so I think that hopefully it continues to go in that direction, barring any kind of economic recession, you know, because restaurants, unfortunately, are the first uh, place where belts That's tighten. That's what we start to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, as long as, as long as the economy continues to grow, I think we'll see more of that kind of activity in the neighborhoods. I mean, 7 and Livernois now, especially with the streetscapes done, I think you're going to see even more restaurants And that is such up. a huge deal for the businesses yeah. there right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, two more things to look forward to in the couple of seconds that we have left. Is there any openings that you're looking forward to? There's a few. Baobab Fair, um, which is also, it's just on the other side of Yum Village on that same building uh, in, in uh, New Center. It's an East African uh, cafe that's run by a refugee couple um, from Burundi. And it's going to be unlike anything that we have in the city. And they have been delayed for years now. Um, I spoke to Mamba a couple of months ago. Uh, actually, last month I saw him at Yum Village and he said they're really close to the finish line. I'm really looking forward to that one. All right, we'll be looking for that. And where can we follow you? Facebook, Instagram, all Twitter? Of them. Yeah, freak.com. Yes. Freak yep. All right, yep. we'll be reading. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks it was so much good for to having me. It's a pleasure.